So this is Baruch here at the Tikkun Elevator Kolel. And we have before us here the tremendous work of Dr. Haim Beinar, tracing in map form the struggles for, for survival of the Jewish people. Now those of you, I know we have a lot of people who are not Jewish who listen to these uh, these videos. <coughs> Everything I say is from the Jewish perspective. I grew up in America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, and the people could talk and say what they wanted. I'm not sure how long that will last because governments really don't like people to be too much free. But that's a problem with Jews, and that's one of the reasons why Jews are always always persecuted by governments and the like. In front of us, we have a picture of the Iberian Peninsula. It may be a little bit hard to see because it kind of fades out down here, but it goes like this and it comes back around. So we see on the map here, it says that here is Portugal and here is Spain. Now we have to understand that I've read that Spain is a country which is not easily, uh, let's say, communi communicate one, se one section. There are mountain, what, what do we say, mountains and rivers that disconnect different land masses makes it very difficult to rule the whole area so here we see at one time and we're going to see the times that we're talking about and read about it and get into it a little more deeply here we have the kingdom of aragon which is where barcelona is located in that area here the king of castile we have portugal like i said before and so the the country is divided up, and this area right here, the dark area, is the Christian part. And we're going to see what we're going to be dealing with at time, but this is going to be the 12th and the 13th century. So he says, then you see there's a Muslim area down here, which is called the Kingdom of Castile, Kingdom of Granada, Kingdom of Castile. So exactly where they at and how, where they are and how they located and were the Jews involved here, what was like that? So here is the title on this place, The Jewish Communities in Spain and the, Recon the, the Reconquest, Reconquista, during the 13th and 14th centuries, 1200s, 1300s. So we're moving closer to like maybe a thousand years ago. The reign of King James I from 1213 to 1276, he ruled over the Kingdom of Aragon, so the continuation of the Reconquista, also known as the Reconquest, which affected Spanish Jewry. King James encouraged Jews from Marseille and North Africa to settle in his kingdom. And many Jews supported his campaigns of conquest of the Bar Bar Balearic Islands and Valencia. In order to settle and develop the conquered territories, he granted land and property to the Jews, and they in turn enjoy the status of settlers in frontiers from frontier areas. He exempted community communities from payment of taxes and reestablished the Jewish community of Parignon, which at that time belonged to the Kingdom of Aragon. Many of the communities which developed enjoyed preferential status in commerce. Jews held key positions in the court administration including that of manager of the king's personal property. So this guy, James I, he was pretty he was a good guy for the Jews. <clears throat> you know, we talk, talk about the golden age of Spain for Jews. It would be accurate to say that the major royal administrative posts were held by Jews who were also prominent in the Jewish community. Among the more outstanding of them were Nachmanides of Gerona, he said the brothers of uh, the brothers Solomon and Bachia al Constantini of Saragossa, so look at an Italian type name, who assisted the king in his campaigns, his campaigns of conquest, and were destined to take part in the controversy regarding the writings of Maimonides. So when he says we're Nachmanides, I don't know if he meant Nachmanides, if it was Moshe ben Nachman. I'm not sure if the of Gerona, maybe that's who that is. I really don't know his background as well as I should. 
So at any rate, take part in the controversy regarding the rights of Maimonides, who was Moshe ben Maimon. So that was a great thing that took that place in Don, Don Judah Ibn Lev Lavi, uh, De La Cavalleria, who was mentioned from 1257 onwards as being the royal treasurer and bailiff of Saragossa. So from the year 1260, let me see if I got this down here where we can see it, maybe be down a little bit lower. So he says, from 1260, Don Judah controlled all the crown revenues, judiciously managing royal expenditure. Nevertheless, from 1260 on, a decline in Jewish power and influence was already apparent. Despite the prominence of Jews under James, their status in Aragon was not one of total security or welfare. Though no official action was directed against them, nor was any specific anti-Jewish policy promulgated, certain changes did occur. During the reign of this same James I, the laws and edicts of Popes Innocent III and, George, uh, and Gregory IX were activated. In 1228, James decreed laws relating to Jews, a fixed 20% maximum interest permitted on loans, so the Jews were always lending money to them, identical to that of the Christian merchants of Florence. A Jewish oath could not serve as evidence in a court of law, and Jews were excluded from state administrative posts. Although the king was in no way involved, the first instance of a, of a blood libel in Spain concerning a Jewish boy allegedly murdered by Jews was circulated in Saragossa in 1250. Now, I said before, from the Jewish point of view, okay, we'll try to make it like that, sound like that. We predate Christianity close to 2,000 years. And the Christians have a hard time digesting us. But what they're known for is blood, spilling blood, things involved in blood. The religion is the blood of Christ. So exactly how that translates in the different types of Christianity, I'm not sure. I know a little bit more about the Catholic version. So this is the blood of Christ, the body of Christ. And so when they want to attack Jews, who are forbidden from eating any blood in any animal that we kill. We have to go through great lengths to remove any blood. But the Christians don't have say, have a problem, did not have a problem at different times, saying that the Jews' children killed children for blood. But blood is their religion. The religion is the religion of blood. These events are indicative of the change that took place in the lives of Spanish Jewry. The Barcelona Disputation in 1266 with the Partition, this is where you see it's Moshe ben Nachman, ben my Nachmanides, and in the presence of James I, the same James I, was undoubtedly instigated by the Church, particularly by the Dominicans, the Dominicanos who were fervent advocates of a militant church policy, that means towards Jews. In many respects, James's policy regarding Jews vacillated between two courses of action. While he used them for his own purposes, because I guess what you're saying here is that the Jews being illiterate people, that we knew how to do things which were important that require intelligence and education, and that we have. And so therefore we're useful. So when things are, when we are really needed in different countries, we are invited in different countries. But after a while, the church catches up with us. That's the experience in Europe. And the worst of it is happening, or amongst the worst of it is beginning to happen in Spain. So he said regarding Vasmid in two per, per, uh, courses of action, while he used them for his own purposes and had need of many Jews for a royal administration, he was nevertheless guided by those church principles and policies that argued for conversion, degradation, and limitation. 
It was Church policy that eventually triumphed, although it is difficult to determine the price date, the precise date at which time this occurred. This is Borough Fleischmann. This is the Tikkun Elevator Kolel. We've had the schluss of reading Dr. Heim Beinart. It's a detailed map history of the survival of the Jews in the medieval times.